Today we're gonna to show you all of our build update modifications since our original build. Kind of go over stuff we've been working on. So first thing, we finally got our Fox shocks tuned by AccuTune. These are super slick, two and a half inch body shocks, remote reservoir, and they're adjustable for high speed and low speed compression damping, which is pretty sweet. Now, these are gonna replace the old stock shocks which are these monotube, just factory shocks. Now you can see this factory shock got majorly sandblasted. This is crazy because this happened the first 6,000 miles and we dented it on a log. So a couple things. One is we're putting boots on our shocks to protect these brand new shocks from getting sandblasted on the road because that's just the reality of driving where we drive. And second is we relocated the shock mount up two inches. So it gave us two inches greater ground clearance. Take a look at that and see how that looks on the truck. All right, in the back of the truck, of course we have our 37 inch spare tire. If you haven't checked out that video, be sure to check that out. And then our biggest change in the back here was the shock tower mounts. So these on the Fords hang down crazy low. And it's the reason we dented one of the factory shocks because we ran into a stump because the thing hanging down so low. So what we did is we just cut it off two inches up, welded new tabs onto the existing factory shock towers and just attached the shocks here. So in order to do this we actually went with a stock length shock so because it was two inches shorter here in essence it's two inches longer than the factory shock would have been otherwise. So we went with the factory length replacement fox shock but you can see the ground clearance now on the shock tower is actually pretty similar to where the u-bolts uh, ground clearance is so this is going to make a big difference two inches of ground clearance is the equivalent of going up four inches in tire size to get the same axle clearance underneath so that was a big change here um, we also added stainless steel extended brake lines now the carly brake lines they only give you longer rear brake lines if you got their four inch lift kit, which we only have their two and a half or three inch kit and or pieces of it. So I actually went to the main or the supplier for Carly, which is Crown Performance and had them build us some custom length brake lines to my spec length. So that worked out really great here. And then the diff cover is quarter inch steel plate welded diff cover. This thing is total beefcake. Uh, we put this on to protect the ring and pinion if we're backing up into a rock. And this thing is great. Fantastic addition here. We have the Deaver Leaf Springs, which if you haven't watched that Deaver suspension video, check that out, talk more about these. Now, part of these Deaver Springs was to get rid of that lift block that's on all of the F250, F350 trucks. So this now has no lift block underneath the axle, but that lift block was also the bump stop uh, stop point. So what we did is we got the Carly bump stop drop and attached that to the factory bump stops. So now this is coming directly in contact with the axle as it compresses the suspension. And the biggest change under the front of the truck is the PSC hydro assist ram. So we took the stock steering box out and sent it into PSC and they ported it for the two lines that are required for hydro assist. And then I had my buddy Derek at 1.7 Fabrication who did all the fabrication work on the truck. He helped uh, build this mount for the Hydro Assist, which is welded to the axle. It took a lot of doing to get a position for this Hydro Assist where we could get full compression on the suspension and full lock-to-lock -lock turning without anything making contact. So in order to do that, we pulled the coil springs and jacked it up and ran it through the full range of motion. So this thing is pretty awesome. We might just do a separate video to just talk about what the Hydro Assist does and the advantages of it, but that's the biggest change in the front of the truck. Um, we already talked about the steering stabilizer. Uh, if you haven't checked that out, check out a, the previous video. And otherwise, it's pretty much the same since we got the truck completed. We did end up adding those longer stainless steel brake lines in the front. And oh, the other change is we removed the front uh, sway bar. Uh, we originally were planning on running the sway bar and had the extended Carly end links, but um, just decided to pull it off and see how it drove. 
and it's massively better in my opinion so we just left it off so that's uh i think that sums up the whole front end changes since our original build inside our truck we have a number of changes we've made the first is the rear area we have the bike platform which if you haven't checked out the build of this platform check out that video this was originally built for our 2019 crew cab truck and then we moved it into our 2020 extended cab truck and the crazy thing is this platform bolted in directly to the truck and fit perfectly so we now have the ability to carry our two mountain bikes in our 2020 truck and then we use this front area for tool storage and some storage underneath the platform for other gear which is really handy and it works out awesome for this new truck now let's take a look at the front of the truck in the front of the truck the biggest addition we did is the scan gauge 2 device that we mounted on the steering column and that plugs into the obd2 port and it helps you monitor any sort of parameters for the engine now what we typically will monitor on this thing in real time is the voltage for the battery we'll monitor the gallons per hour of fuel consumption the coolant temperature and also the transmission temperature now this is really handy you can also monitor any other parameter that you could possibly imagine that the computer will, will uh, read out but what we found is that without being able to monitor the real-time coolant and transmission temperature you have no idea what's actually happening with your engine and especially when it's under high load or hot temperatures it's really important to be able to monitor that stuff now the gauges that you'll typically see in your truck like the analog temperature gauge and so forth those are not accurate basically they get to a certain temperature and you'll never see them move past that with the exception of a catastrophic failure where it overheats and you'll see the gauge move now that's just not real because the reality is as it gets hot outside and as you're pulling a steep hill or a huge load on your truck your coolant temperature is going to increase and so what this does is show you the actual to the degree um, temperature for the, the different uh, things such as your coolant or your transmission so that's really helpful just so you can change how you're driving as you need to as you're driving along just so you don't overload or overheat your truck and you can adjust as needed so this is a great device super happy to add this to this truck we had it on our Winnebago previously and really enjoyed it as well so let's take a look at the dash area next for our electronic gear storage and holders so added a phone mount and this is a pretty slick phone mount you basically just drop your phone in and kind of holds on to it and it has a wireless charger built into it so there's no cables to connect on the phone and it's really handy for navigation and just having it permanently mounted up here now the other change we made was this ram mount to the center and this is used for our little sony camera which is really handy for video just video shots out of the truck and then also for video inside the truck where it will hold the camera for us and the biggest change that I was most excited about was getting the tablet mounts. So we have a, a nice Samsung tablet that we use for a lot of stuff, but it's super great for navigation. We have a number of different navigation apps, including Google Maps, which we use a lot. And then we have Gaia as well, which we just started using just to try that out. We also have Backcountry Navigator and having a big map is really handy so we're trying to figure out how to hold this you know a lot of guys are installing these tablets way up here but it's blocking the windshield also gets in the way of the airbag if you had that thing deployed and had a tablet hit you in the face it probably would be a bad day so we wanted to mount it down low and out of the way and mostly so faith can use it while i'm driving so we got this really great ram mount that makes it really fast to uh put it in and and there it's held and we basically found this great location on the truck where it is basically on the plastic interior but it was out of the way so we could still open the glove box we could still access all the HVAC controls and the screen without it getting in the way and it's movable so it, it works really well and she can easily reach it and navigate I can see it really easy at the same time so it was kind of an ideal perfect location to make this thing happen now 
in order to secure it, because this is a plastic uh, piece of the dash, I used some, uh, a metal backing plate behind here. So it gave it a lot of structural stability with holding this tablet. And the tablet is pretty light, so it's really not been a problem at all. It's actually held it really well, even on really super rough, bouncy roads. So this has worked out super great, because when we're off-road navigating, on remote tracks a lot of times i'll create these different routes and tracks and then we'll kind of follow it as we go exploring and having big screen to see the topo map so you can see where your turns are and kind of where you're at with the map easily makes a huge difference with exploring off-road so this has been a awesome addition to the truck and it's super functional we've been really really happy with that another change we made was with the software programming for this truck. Now the 2020 trucks are different than the 2019 trucks. They actually updated a, a bunch of the programming for it. But if you check out some information videos on Forescan, that software allows you to plug in via the OBD2 port and make some configuration changes to the actual programming software inside the truck. So some of the things that we used that software to change was the speedometer reading. So we changed the tire size to 37 inch tire. Well, we were able to make a parameter change inside the software to actually make the speedometer read proper within 2% of actual GPS for a real speed with these tires on the truck, which was amazing to be able to do that. Uh, with that software and no other additional configuration add-on devices to make that happen. The other changes we made, which were pretty fun, was to turn off a lot of the dinging and binging and bonging that the truck makes, uh, such as when the key's in the ignition, you open a door, uh, seat belts, that sort of thing. Um, you can change almost any of those parameters, which is really handy. Another thing we had is that these 37 inch tires have a max inflation PSI of 50. Now the truck I believe is at 60 or 65 PSI. And so we had the low tire pressure light on all the time, which was super annoying. So in that software, we were able to change the warning light um, PSI that it came in on. So we actually dropped it, I think to 35 or 40 PSI. And so that way we went constantly being, getting notifications that our tires were low pressure, uh, which is super annoying. Uh, we also changed it so that it could roll the windows up and down via the remote control. And we changed the little display screen to show Ford performance. So now it looks cool, but there's a bunch of stuff you can change on that. So definitely check that out if you haven't already on these trucks. It's super great. Be able to customize some stuff, maybe uh, change some annoying things that you're having to deal with on them as well. Anyway, thanks for watching our build update video. If you have any questions about any part of the build that we did, feel free to mention them below and I'll be glad to answer what I can. If you have any other ideas or suggestions for us, share that with us as well. We'd love to hear it. Otherwise, we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.